You got the eighth pick in your fantasy football draft. Let's go through the strategy tips, roster construction, all the players you need to target, the values, everything you need to know to dominate your draft from the eighth pick. It's fantasy football season. It's the best time of the year. It is draft season. Let's go. What? What? Why are you shaking your head? You're welcome. What's going on, y'all? I am Graham Barfield. I'm one of the co-owners here at FantasyPoints.com, the best fantasy football site in the universe. And we are going to be going through a draft today on Sleeper.com, going through a mock draft from the eighth pick. Like I said, going through all the tips and tricks, everything to dominate your league mates. John Hansen, the guru, and I, we have been going through every single pick that you can make, ones through 12. We're going to be wrapping up the strategy videos here very shortly. If you haven't already, go back through and check the previous videos. Let's say you got a draft on Sunday and you're picking from the five spot. You got a draft next Monday or drafting from the one. Go back through. Uh, check out all the videos that we did. I'm sure you'll it'll help and I'm sure it'll give you some ideas. And a good idea of kind of like, you know, how at least at least how the board's going to vaguely look as you go through your draft today. I'm going to be going and using my top 150 tier sheet. You know, we kind of have like an inside running joke at fantasypoints.com. We we call things top 150 list. We call something top 200. We always end up ranking more players. Uh, my tiers are top 175 actually, and we have every single player graded out statistical analysis. Uh, the the tiers are based on the projections that we've built by Chris Wecht and the team. Uh, we pl placed everybody uh, from the projections, aggregate ADP. That's what we're going to be using today for this draft. And if you haven't already, subscribe to fantasypoints.com. Fantasypoints.com slash plans. Use code score more. Uh, every single stat except for like maybe 5% came from the Fantasy Points data suite in my tiers article. It's helped me become a better research player. And if you're a serious fantasy football player, you're serious about betting, serious about, you know, about playing DFS, you need to use the Fantasy Points data suite. Okay, as I say at the start of every draft, know your league settings before you get in. Know exactly how many players you have to start at each position. Know how many points the quarterback gets for every touchdown. Some leagues it's four. Most leagues it's four, some leagues it's six. This league is a PPR league, so every player gets a point per reception. Uh, and we're gonna start two running backs, two receivers, two flex spots, one tight end, one quarterback. As I always say, if you know, you got to start three receivers, it's probably, you're probably going to see higher receiver runs in the mid rounds. You're going to see more receivers go in the first couple of rounds and you're going to want more of them in general. You're going to want better depth and you're going to want access to high ceiling scores. So if you have to start three, you're kind of giving a little more leeway to them, especially in the second, third round, a little more leeway over the running backs. However, in this league format, this is your typical league, two receivers, two flexes. It definitely kind of evens out the running backs and receivers. Let's get started. Get this draft started from the eighth hole and hopefully draft the best team possible. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, Brees Hall, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase. Man, Bijan and A.J. Brown are the tier here for me. Those are the two players to choose from. Uh, if you guys have been listening to these videos, you, you know how I feel about Christian McCaffrey, Brees, and Bijan. I think these are the three players that have clear, like median 20 PPR points per game, like every single week. Um, McCaffrey at the higher end of that, 22 to 23. I think Bijan and, and Brees probably at the lower end, but we've just we've seen it with Brees, right? Like he was literally the RB1 by points per game in the games that the Jets won last season. Uh, just massively, massively game script dependent. Uh, now the Jets are favored in 13 games. They have a much better implied total. Same argument can be made for Bijan. Uh, Falcons have a very underrated offensive line. All five of their guys are coming back, and they're all pretty good. Kirk Cousins, huge quarterback upgrade. There's a bigger, a better floor now, too. Like if Cousins you know, were to get hurt, were to miss time, I feel pretty good about Michael Penix coming in and you know providing adequate quarterback play. Uh, that's something that the Falcons have not had in many, many years at this point. 
Uh, Bijan at the eight is just stealing. I, I think he should be going no later than three. I don't think Bijan should be, or excuse me, I don't think Bree should be going any later than three either. Um, I, I just think mo- both of them just absolutely massive, massive upside. Okay. Back on the clock here. It went Gibbs, Brown, Wilson, 12 team, double tapped running backs, then Barkley, Adams, and Harrison. Um, this is the middle of the tier three. And when I say this in my article, like this is just a big wide open tier. Like there are a couple of picks that I'm lower on in this spot. Like I'm definitely lower. Um, well, Devonte Adams is already gone, but I'm lower on him in this tier. Um, that's really the, the main one. I'm a little lower on Saquon Barkley, but he's a completely fine second round pick, especially for a team that just took Garrett Wilson. There's a player right here though, that is, you know, just sitting here obvious to me that has just massive, massive upside. It's Devon Achan. Um, Achan is, you know, split snaps right down the middle, literally 50, 50 last season with Raheem Mostert in their games where both of them were healthy. Mostert got all the goal line carries. However, Achan just has so much fantasy football upside because he's highly involved as a receiver. Um, Scott Barrett, Ryan Heath, they've both put a ton of research behind this. Targets are worth about two and three, almost three times worth uh, more than a carry in PPR leagues. Two and about two and three quarters times the amount in HN dominated most of last year in targets, dominated in route share. I see that growing this season with him as a part of his role. And a Bijan HN start, I can't imagine more upside at, uh, at running back than those two. Uh, and the, the main reason we're doing this and the main reason I think the strategy is just so enticing this season, you start with at least one of these hero running backs. Like we could have taken Puka here and felt great about a you know Bijan Puka start. However, you're starting to, now we can just sit back in the middle of these, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rounds, find all the best receiver values. Again, we, this league, you only have to start two, so we shouldn't see too big of a run. At receiver, we should see a lot of these backs kind of get pushed up the board a little bit. To me, this tier is pretty clear. It's Debo and it's Cup. Um, Debo, obviously, big touchdown ceiling, little inconsistent week to week. Cup, back healthy off the hamstring injury that bothered him all of last season. Um, you know, obviously he's 31 now. There's the age curve risk. There's the Puka Nakua risk, who's just an absolute baller. However, but if you look at just the 12 games that they both started and played with Matthew Stafford, Cup slightly, slightly had the higher first read target share. I think he's at worst the wide receiver 1B, obviously, in this offense. But, you know, attached to Matthew Stafford, attached to a really good implied total. I think we're going to take Cup here. We'll take Cup over Debo. Again, PPR league, Cup's super high floor, man. He should at least catch four or five balls every single week. Um, get get there. Oh, man, I just almost put him in, in our queue here. I really wanted DJ Moore for this team. That would have been sick. Uh, it's okay, though. Devonta Smith, DK Metcalf, and Neighbors, those are the clear three at this spot here. Um, I've got Smith ranked ahead of DK. I've got Neighbors slightly behind DK, but I really think you can make an argument for either one. Neighbors is going to, man, he's going to push for 145 to 150 targets, like easily. Um, but Daniel Jones, a little bit, <laughs> makes me a little bit unqueasy. I think Neighbors is, is correctly priced. is just a volume wide receiver too. The upside argument really comes down to just how good this offense can be. I'm a little more squeamish with neighbors. Uh, just to be honest, I, I, I trust Jalen Hurts. I trust the Eagles offense a little bit more. Um, neighbors is a swing for the fences pick here. I, I think for this team, though, we need a little bit higher floor. I'm going to take Devonta Smith. I think he's the clear high floor play uh, for this team. Underpriced in fantasy football. Uh, great pick in the fourth round. But again, I, I think that that was really tricky there. Neighbors ends up going at the back of the the fourth round, which great value, man. Start a team with Lamb and, and Neighbors, but that tier is really tight between Smith, Metcalf, Neighbors. Okay, we're back on the clock. There's a player that I'm like massively, massively overweight, massively, massively ranked over the markets here. It's Rashi Rice. Uh, Rice last season tied Nico Collins and Justin Jefferson in targets per route run. Both of them, excuse me, all three of them tied for 11th. Uh, over 
their final 12 games last season, Rasheed Rice earned more targets than Travis Kelsey. He was already their, their wide receiver one. 92 targets to Kelsey's 86. Rice is just a baller, man. Led all wide receivers in yards after the catch on non-designed targets. We're taking out the screens. We're taking out the, you know, the Mahomes dump-offs. We're taking out the Andy Reid magic on plays where he you know, caught and run the ball down the field on a downfield route, not on a screen. Led all receivers in yards after the catch over George Pickens, over Debo, who's the yak god. Uh, I just think Rasheed Rice has win your league upside. With Xavier Worthy stretching the field, with Marquise Brown stretching the field, you know, if Rice starts getting a little more downfield looks, we already know he's going to get the, a lot of the design targets. They love scheming him up. Targets. Uh, Rice is just a slam dunk pick in the fifth round right now, man. Like I would have honestly, guys, I would I would take him like as early as the third round. That's where I think he should be going. The suspension risk just doesn't really matter all that much to me as long as it's not during weeks fifteen through seventeen. We're perfectly fine. We are, we are absolutely perfectly fine. Uh, Rice, Cooper, Higgins were the clear three for me right there. The clear three. Um, all right, we're back on the clock here. Minute to kind of sort this out. Um, receiver kind of fell off here. This is like, you know, we, we drafted from the right tier. We made the right pick with Rice, but this is a big, long, flat tier here with... Let's see, Kirk at the top of it, Calvin Ridley, Chris Godwin. You know what? I don't, I don't think we've taken Chris Godwin yet on, on a stream yet. I'm, I'm really into Chris Godwin this year. I think he bounces back nicely. Coming back, working out of the slot more. Um, running back's kind of dead here. This is a big, long dead zone. We've already got two really good ones. Evan Ingram would be okay here. They're in the same tier. I've got Ingram a little ahead, but... We can maybe push tight end. I would like one more really good receiver for this team. So let's say let's say Godwin. Pretty good start here. Bijan, A Chan, nice, really nice upside at receiver. Pretty high floor at at, at um excuse me, nice upside at uh, running back, really high floor at receiver. Uh Godwin, Cup, Rice, all those guys when healthy should be catching four or five balls per game. Attached to really good quarterbacks, a good touchdown upside. Um, yeah, like I said, this is a you know, we in these mid rounds here, like we were talking about, we're seeing a very even amount of running backs to receivers. Uh, Xavier Worthy certainly would have made the process here, and just getting two rec uh, Chiefs receivers would be pretty interesting. Even though it would be, ta I would be taking Worthy well ahead of where I have him ranked. Uh, but man, it does feel good. Ridley, Deontay Johnson, I think are the the clear top uh, top of tier players. Uh, but, but, but yeah, we take Kyler here. I like Jake Ferguson more than Njoku. Let's see. Let's let's take a peek here. The team 10 has is the only team that doesn't have a quarterback or a tight end. So I feel like we should, if we're gonna take one of these guys, it should be here. Um I've got Kyler ranked well ahead of Jake Ferg, but I really don't feel good about any tight end that's left besides him. So we're gonna take Ferguson here. We'll take Ferguson. We'll see what this team 10 does. He takes Ridley. They take, oh, love. Okay. So now we're back on the clock here. We have a decision between Kyler or Deontay. Um, I do have Kyler slightly ranked ahead of Deontay. However, I think Deontay is probably going to be the end of that receiver tier. All right, we're going to push. We're going to take Deontay, take our, our fifth receiver. Uh, Deontay y'all is, he's an ass man. I'll say that much. Uh, Deon Deontay is, is an ass man. Uh, he led, well, he was actually second behind, uh, only tank Dell with a better average separation rate last season than Deontay Johnson. Two seasons ago, Deontay was top 20 in separation metrics. He's just never gotten the quarterback play. Obviously, Bryce Young last season really struggled. Bottom of the league in catchable throw rate. Um, yeah, I, I do think Deontay is a really, really good pick in PPR. I question the touchdown upside on this team. I question the upside in general, but you know, we know he can earn targets. We know he's a great separator and that profile, like I can't get away from in the eighth round. Uh, Dave Canales, Please save Bryce Young. We're gonna we're gonna keep our fingers crossed there. Uh, clear player to target here is Chase Brown. Another clear player to target is Jaden Daniels. I don't know if I can let up 
potentially one of these guys sniping my guy, Jaden Daniels, away from me here. Uh, that would be catastrophic, especially for this team. We feel really good about our running backs. Uh, when you have – this is the other thing that, you know, Bijan and HN kind of unlocks. It unlocks this really unique but great team build, right? Like, if Bijan and HN get hurt, like, we're screwed anyway, right? Like, what are the odds Chase Brown, like, is the absolute, like, linchpin here? Um for this team. Like I think it would take Zach Moss getting hurt or Brown just like straight up way outplaying Moss. This is going to be some sort of committee. All of these guys are committee backs. You know, I, I think I've got Brown clearly ahead of all of them. Um, but for this particular team build, uh, yeah, we're going to take Jaden Daniels here. We're going to pray that these guys aren't sharp. I'm really glad we took Jaden Daniels because these guys are taking backup quarterbacks here. Yeah. Chase Brown, easiest pick. Uh, this was a little bit of cheating here. I feel like getting Brown in the, in this spot, he's going to go earlier in your leagues. He should be going earlier. And if he's not, I hope you're taking him earlier. I would have taken him as early here as this eight pick. I also, I would have, I would not have taken him over Jonathan Brown or excuse me, Jonathan Brooks, uh, Panthers running back, love his upside, but chase Brown in the 10th round is just, I mean, unbelievable value. Uh, all right, we're going to take a couple just like swing for the fences running backs. Like we feel really good about our five receivers. We've got a stud quarterback that runs a ton in Jaden Daniels. We've got Jake Ferguson, fine at tight end. Um, I think we've got Rico ahead here. Take one peek here at these uh, these rankings. I, I I really think if there's a guy who can break free in this backfield, it's not going to be Zeke. It'll probably be Rico. Uh, Cowboys sharp beat reporter over at the athletic. John Manchada has been saying for a couple of weeks now in his articles that he believes Rico Dowdle leads the team in rushing, you know, take that with a grain of salt leading the Cowboys in rushing this season could mean 600 yards and absolutely nothing. But Hey, I think if there's a guy that's going to break out here on this team, it's not going to be Zeke. It's going to be Dowdle. The big question becomes, you know, how how big is Zeke's role, right? He's going to be the, you know, goal line back, probably the short yardage back. He might get a little pass pro work. However, if Dowdle can be a better pass protector, maybe earn uh, a little more, a few more, you know, short yardage reps, um, you know, attached to to Dak, this team's going to throw a ton, y'all. Like absolutely throw a ton. Uh, I really, I really don't mind Rico Dowdle late round RB four. Um, to me, these, this tier here, we've, we feel really good. We've got four running backs would love a fifth one. I think we should take a fifth one here. JK Dobbins has, I think the most upside of this group, obviously coming off all the catastrophic injuries though. Like you have to question at this point, whether the guy still got it, but you know, this is enough to me, right? Like the chargers are kind of telling us they feel comfy with, you know, Gus Edwards is the one a Dobbins is the one B I don't think Dobbins has like the league winning upside that he once does, obviously because of all the injuries, but solid value. I, I mean, I, I think you could, you know, absolutely project him for a week one role. Like if we had to put him in a flex spot, let's say, you know, week one, like we really, really wouldn't want to, but like, we know he's probably going to get eight to 12 touches. Uh, I think for this team, he makes a lot of sense. Uh, Chargers obviously going to be very run heavy. The second guy I was considering, he just went Zach Charbonnet. Uh, he's, he's, I don't think he's going to have enough of a weekly role. It seems like they want Ken Walker in more of a bell cow role. He plays more in the passing game this season. Ryan Grubb has mentioned it multiple times, wanting to get Walker more involved as a receiver. I think Charbonnet is just a really good handcuff at this point. I, I don't see the flex worthy upside. Uh, Josh Palmer also might be an ass man. Uh, he definitely is really good yards per route run last season against man coverage. Uh, that's a sign of a good separator, uh, especially a good sign when he was trying to earn targets with Keenan Allen last year, who's like one of the premier target earners in NFL history. I think Josh Palmer is a very, very deep sleeper, very, very deep sleeper this season. Um, like him a lot. I, you know, I think Ladd McConkey leads the team in targets. I'm not excited to draft chargers pass catchers by any means, but Palmer's underrated. I, I think he's underrated. And at 150 ADP here on Sleeper, he's a phenomenal pick. So we're going to take Josh Palmer as our last receiver. Uh, he'll be one of the guys, maybe one of the first guys that we cut 
you know, for one of those upside running backs or, you know, the waiver wire darling uh, week one. Uh, all right, we got to take a kicker and a defense. I always get sniped on kickers in these, man. I want a Kaimi Fairbairn. Uh, late by dome team, great offense. Those are the types of uh, the kickers I'm looking for. Uh, Cowboys open up weeks one and two with Cleveland and uh, in New Orleans. Seems pretty good. I'm pretty stunned they weren't the first defense off the board. So we're going to take Cowboys here. Uh, Cowboys. You know, I'm I'm always a you know kind of defense streamer, but you know Cowboys. I think Jets. I'm not there with Niners. I think Niners regress a little bit. I think Ravens regress a little bit. But Cowboys and Jets to me seem like kind of the set it and forget it for at least early in the season. Uh, early in the season, Jets do have a really tough schedule again this season. Uh, all right, we got to take a kicker. I'm not thrilled with any of these options. Matt Gay's okay. Um, all right, we'll take Matt Gay. Late bye. Hopefully a good offense. Really good team here, y'all. I think this was a, a really, really solid team. I don't think we made any mistakes, you know, just in terms of like overall roster construction. If we made one, it was maybe not taking Jonathan Brooks over Deontay Johnson here. Uh, just to, you know, feel really great about our three running backs. I think if you take Jonathan Brooks right now, you have to take him with the expectation that like weeks one through four are probably out. I don't know if he starts on the season on PUP. I'd be pretty surprised if he does. Uh, start the season, you know, automatically out for the first four games, but uh, he's going to be ramped up. I view him as like a really strong RB two for the back of the season with underrated PPR upside. The first thing Dave Canales said after they drafted him is how much they love his versatility. Brooks in the eighth round would have been a phenomenal pick, and like I said, I think if that was the one pick we could have had back. We would have done it. We needed another receiver though, and like I said, I kind of laid out the case for Deontay. But Cup, Devonta Smith, Rice, and Godwin, along with Deontay, with these running backs, Jaden Daniels, man, ninth round is just unbelievable with this guy. Um, massive, massive upside with Jaden Daniels. Um, I just released my uh, super flex two quarterback league draft planning. Check that out on the site. Uh, basically, the whole plan was centered around Jaden Daniels and in two, two quarterback leagues. I think he's the best pick on the board right now. That's not name Rasheed Rice. Jane Daniels in the ninth round just feels like you're drafting Anthony Richardson light, but four or five rounds later. Um, the big differences to me between Richardson and Daniels, one being obviously the Colts offensive line and just their whole ecosystem. Uh, Shane Steichen, significantly better coach than Cliff Kingsbury. However, Jaden Daniels is just like a prolific runner. Uh, he basically doubled Anthony Richardson in final season rushing yards per game in college. Uh, Richardson averaged more rushing yards per game than Kyler Murray. Basically, only Cam Newton and Lamar Jackson in terms of rushing profile are his superiors. And um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty good corollaries to kind of point to for Jaden Daniels. You can draft this guy in the ninth round. You can draft him in the 10th round. I would draft him honestly. If I had a thousand dollars on this league, I would draft Jaden Daniels as early as like round six or seven. I think his floor is just insanely high. I I have him ahead of Dak Prescott. Uh, I don't have him as high as Joe Burrow or CJ Stroud, but I've got you know pretty close. Uh, not as high as Kyler because we've seen Kyler do it, but he's in that tier. He's in that same tier as Kyler for me. And Kyler went round eight. Uh, phenomenal value for Kyler. Kyler, sh another guy who should be going to maybe at least one round, but maybe two earlier. Uh, really strong team. Like I said, I would be stunned if you actually got Chase Brown at 10th, in the 10th round these days. His sleeper ADP makes literally no sense. Um, at worst, I think he's the 1B. I still think Zach Moss probably gets the first crack at goal line carries, uh, but Chase Brown, we know he's going to be involved in passing downs. He's just got to improve in pass protection. And if he does, like if Chase Brown can pass protect and he can you know, not get Burrow killed back there, bell cow is in his range of outcomes for sure i think that's probably what the Bengals want right is like they would really want brown to be the guy who like you know outplays zach moss rico and jk dobbins like listen these guys could be absolute cut candidates by week three like they could you know not really even have jobs uh but there's enough upside attached to good offenses nice touchdown upside with both these guys dobbins obviously huge risk but he's our rb5 man like you know like i said if dobbins ends up not doing much for us that is completely fine. 
we'll count them by weeks one through four. Uh, all right, guys, this was a really good draft. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, if you thought I made any mistakes, if you like some of my picks, leave a comment down below. We are pushing for 10K, y'all, before week one. Make sure you're subscribed. If you're not already, please, it would mean a lot to us for us you to hit that subscribe button. Guys, until the next one, see you at the top of the leaderboards.